In this video, we will tackle the second type of stress, which is shear stress. In shear stress, we are interested in the tendency of one surface or area to slide past the other. It is produced by a force parallel to an area, and then we have three general types of shear. We have single shear, double shear, and punching shear. Now forces parallel to the area resisting the force cause shearing stress, and it differs from tensile and compressive stresses which are caused by forces perpendicular to the area. Let's recall that from Ickshaw's stress. Now the other word for shearing stress is tangential stress. First, I will discuss what single shear is. Single shear occurs when the applied force or load acts on a single plane within the material, causing it to deform or fail along that plane. This means that the force is applied in a direction parallel to only one surface or plane of the material. For example, if you push or pull on one end of a rod or beam so that it bends or deforms along a single plane, you are subjecting it to single shear. And so here, we generally have this configuration for single shear. Now in this figure, we have two plates connected together by a bolt. Now these are our plates and this is our bolt. Notice that if you pull the plates this way, this part of the bolt will have the tendency to slide past each other because you're pulling it here and also here. The bolts experience shear stress due to the forces trying to cut them across their cross-sectional area. Again, let's remember that in stresses, we are interested in the internal force and so to analyze the internal force in the bolt, we can make a cutting plane along the cross-section at which the bolt is subjected to shear, which is essentially right here because it's the part where our plates meet. And then now, since we have made this cut, let's try to isolate the bolt. It will look like this. Notice that if you will transmit the load P, they will be acting here. This is for P right here and this one is from here. Now again, our cutting plane is at the junction point of the two plates because that's where the bolt is subjected to shear. And then we may consider the top part of the cutting plane or the bottom part. Now for the purpose of discussion, I will just consider the top part, which is this one. Now essentially, if I will consider the top part, it will initially look like this. But this is not in equilibrium, because we need to have an internal force resisting this load. And so that's why we will develop a shear force, this is the resulting internal force, and it will act parallel to the bolt. Now just to recall, Parallel is a term used in geometry to describe two or more lines, planes, or surfaces that are always the same distance apart and never intersect. Now if we have this line and this line, these two are always the same distance apart and then they never intersect, and thus they are parallel. And so notice that our P is acting horizontally, and so essentially this is the parallel area to it. And so we'll consider that area in our analysis of the shear stress. But note again that we are considering the cross-sectional area here. If you view this part of the section from the bottom or the top, you can see a circular area. And so if you want to make sense of that, it will look like this. This is the part of the bolt subjected to shear. And then this is actually our parallel area, which is just the cross-section of the bolt. Now in most cases, we'll just be viewing our systems in 2D, but this is the isometric view so that you'll be able to appreciate what we are trying to solve. Now I just removed the bolt heads so that you will be able to make a better sense of the part of the bolt subjected to shear, which is essentially this one. Considering that this is the center and then it will be at this point. Now aside from single shear, our bolts or rivets may also experience double shear. Essentially, shearing stresses are commonly found in bolts, pins, and rivets used to connect various structural members and also machine components. And then double shear happens when, as we make two cuts to reveal the internal force in our bolt, there will be two resisting areas. And so that's why in here, we have two times the shear area because we have two resisting shear areas. To simplify this, double shear happens when three plates are connected and the middle plate is loaded in one direction while the outer plates are loaded in the opposite direction. Now notice that at the junction point of the two plates, we can pass two cutting sections, one right here and another one right here. Now if we will isolate the bolt, we have this free body diagram. 
wherein we will transmit the load coming from plate A and plate B and then we'll move that here. Now keep in mind that this body is in equilibrium because we have P going to the right and the two forces here, if added together, will just equal P. Now take note that these are not two forces of P, but P is just the total force going to the left and so if the loading is symmetrical, it can be assumed that each plate would carry P over 2 or half of P. Now since at the middle, the bolt experiences shear at two planes, let us try to analyze it. If we have a bolt right here and that we are pulling at the plate from both sides, then these two will be the portion that will be subjected to shear because they will have the tendency to slide past each other because of this plate, which tends to tear this apart. And so we'll consider the middle and then isolating that cut, we have this one. Now we have force P from this loading and then because we have two resisting areas, there will be two resisting forces. And so considering the free body diagram, we can sum up horizontal forces. And so we have summation of horizontal forces, 2V is equal to P. And so expressing V in terms of P, we have V is equal to P divided by 2. Now let me explain the formula of double shear. Basically, this just comes from tau is equal to shear force divided by the area. However, our shear force is P divided by 2. And so we can just actually change this one. So we have tau is equal to P over 2 divided by the area. So this is why we have this formula. Or you may also interpret this as the resisting area of shear is two areas, the top one and the bottom one. So that your formula would always be V divided by the shear area. That's more intuitive. Now this configuration right here is also in double shear because both EG and both HJ are both in double shear. In simpler terms, you can see that the connection is in double shear when you have three plates connected together by a bolt or when you can cut the bolt at two planes and there will be two resisting areas involved. That's how you can identify. So we can consider this figure, let's make a cut at the middle and then try to notice that this is just a portion of the figure earlier. So this is still in double shear. Finally, we have what we call punching shear. Now to understand this, try to imagine that you're holding a cardboard box with a lot of things inside it. If you will not support the cardboard box at the base, then it will have the tendency to fail by shearing around the point of contact. And therefore a hole is created at the bottom of the cardboard box and then the objects inside will fall. That's the basic definition of punching shear. Now in mechanics, examples of this stress usually involves shear in the metal sheet produced by a punch or simply a puncher. Now let's say this is the top view of our punch and then this is the top view of our metal sheet. And then let's try to visualize that. We want to make a hole around this metal sheet because perhaps we want to use it in our connections. Now let's see the punch in action. First, let's place the punch against the plate. Notice that if you apply a vertical force large enough to make a hole out of the sheet, it will look like this. Let's apply the downward force and then this is what happens. The punch will pierce through the metal plate. And so there's a portion of the sheet that would be punched out. Now let's recall that shear stress involves areas parallel to the force. Now if you look at the cut portion, which part of this is subjected to shear stress? Is it this one or this one? Notice that it will not be this one anymore. It's not the circular area because this is our P and notice that this is perpendicular to our force. So we are not interested in that. Perhaps we could be interested in that if we want the actual stress experienced by the punch. So instead, the area we will consider here is this part. Because notice that this is parallel to our force P and so if you want to visualize that properly, we have this configuration. Again, this is the whole punch from the sheet and then our shear area is the one colored in green. Notice that this area can be obtained by getting the perimeter of the circle or the sum of the sides and then we'll multiply that by the thickness which is this one so the perimeter times the thickness will account for this area and so that will be the area that we will consider in punching shear so you could try to imagine the sides of a coin for this shear area now since I don't want you to blindly memorize formulas without knowing the shear areas just to generalize this one I just labeled it as AV. But essentially, 
AV will be the perimeter of the cross section multiplied by the thickness. The thickness we are considering here is the thickness of the plate, not the punch, because we are punching the hole from the plate. 